Hi, my name is Zesla Vojkovic. I build payment systems at Bizon, which is a company that creates solutions for retail and hospitality industry. And the talk is about using Go to simplify building uh, mobile, mobile applications across multiple platforms. So the solution we are discussing here is, it started as a rather typical, typical uh, mobile application. So there were some servers in the cloud running a web uh, API written in Rails. Uh, there was an Android application running on the mobile device. Um, and there was one addition, which is a payment terminal or a card reader used to make credit card payments. Uh, payment uh, terminals are specific in a way that uh, they're typically driven by proprietary protocols defined by the, by the vendors, and these protocols are usually stateful. So they require uh, a connection uh, during whole time of, of the transaction. Um, since this is, it's, it's very important to get this right, and if you want to fix the problems, you need to fix them fast, sometimes much faster than uh, the cycle, update cycle of the mobile application. We were actually controlling these, uh, uh, these payment uh, terminals directly from the server, which means that application acted as a kind of a bridge, which was just shuttling messages from the server to the payment uh, terminal and back to the server, and also sending some notifications which control the interactions of the application itself. Uh, this was very flexible and it worked quite nice. Uh, however, there were some issues with, with this. First of all, uh, these are long, long running TCP connections. Uh, this is something which doesn't really fit the model of Rails applications very well, so there were some issues with, with load on the, on the server. Um, additionally, um, the equipment is deployment sometimes in, in locations which, are, uh, which have very flaky connections. Uh, this means that this connection can break, and terminals are actually very sensitive in this context. And this means that uh, even after you are halfway through your transaction and your payment, uh, the transaction gets aborted and you have to restart again. You cannot just retry the call to the server. So we were not happy with this. Uh, uh, also, as we started getting bigger clients, we started hitting their uh, security policies and sometimes then they would not allow custom TCP traffic through their firewalls. So. Uh, this was an extra problem, and in addition to all that, as we started branching uh, the applications into other platforms like iOS and Windows, uh, we had to re-implement this bridging logic, notification logic, and everything for each of the platforms. This, of course, resulted in subtle and not so, not so subtle bugs and differences between different platforms, and this is something that you don't really, you don't really want, want uh, in your application. <laughs> all these issues uh, made us consider different, different uh, architecture where we would have native platform specific application for, I don't know, iOS or Android. Uh, there would be a core lib which implements this generic logic across all the platforms, so you implement it only once and you fix bugs only on one place. Um, however, uh, we didn't want to encode all the logic in the core library because we wanted to have flexibility of, of changing uh, transaction procedures very quickly. If we see some issues, we want to fix it in, in a matter of minutes and not waiting three days until the application is updated. So uh, we decided to embed the scripts which run the, 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 the transactions and we pull them directly from the, from the server. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we decided to find the, the appropriate technology uh, to implement this and we had an extensive list of requirements. These are just some of them. But uh, the most important were uh, support for all the target platforms that we were targeting, um, platform bindings. Uh, we wanted technology which will take care of generating bindings between our native implementation and the target platform. You don't want to write that by, by hand because it's, it's quite hairy business. Uh, we wanted it to support scripting in a simple way. Uh, it must be easy to learn because it's very hard to find the developers. So you either have to train the developers or find people who know it, and this is becoming harder and harder. Um, we wanted the technology to be supported well, either by the community or by some larger, larger company, and my personal preference is that it is statically typed. I hope that this won't make half of you leave the, the room in disgust. 
so these were uh, our requirements and we had extensive list also of the candidates. After checking all of these, we settled on Go. Now, all these other languages listed here are either better or more fun than Go. And quite frankly, most of them are actually both. Uh, however, the Go was, was the only language which didn't fail any of our requirements. And uh, what it lacks uh, uh, as a language, it makes up with uh, excellent tooling and with very live community and, and actually very nice uh, whole ecosystem around it. Uh, by the way, uh, one of the best contenders was uh, Kotlin native. And I think it might be actually the better choice for this uh, if it was mature enough. However, it was at 0.4 version at the moment, and this was too risky for us to, 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 to place bets on technology which is so early in the development cycle. Uh, we also checked some game engines, because uh, if you look at the list of the requirements, game engine is actually excellent fit. It hits all, all these requirements except one thing, and that's uh, that game engines are more suited for building full applications and not just libraries. So this is why we didn't choose them, but it's actually great technology for cross-platform development. So once we choose Go, uh, for scripting we quickly settled on Lua because it's more or less standard for scripting and it's very nice for that. <clears throat> this was our new, new architecture. Uh, there was platform-specific UI and services built on platform technology like Objective-C or, or uh, Java for Android. Um, this was the core library which took care of uh, written in Go, of course, uh, which took care of uh, handling file system, networking, scripting, concurrency, uh, communication with uh, payment terminals, communication with our payment gateway and server, and also hosting uh, Lua scripts. Uh, transaction scripts were written in Lua, as I said before, and there, there is this part which I skipped initially, and it is shown in red. It's not a coincidence. If you have ever written uh, glue code uh, from for example, from, from Java to, to some native technology, and if you have written this Java native interface stuff, you know that this is something that you don't want to do. You want someone or something else to, to take care of this for you. Uh, fortunately, Go <coughs> has something which is called Go Mobile. <coughs> it, is a, it is a toolkit from Google, which allows developers to develop apps and libraries uh, for uh, Android and iOS um, all in Go. Uh, it's built on C Go, which is a technology that lets Go use C code and C libraries. And also it lets you uh, compile and build native uh, libraries like DLLs or shared objects. So uh, we decided to use that and this was actually quite a nice experience. For example, this is a typical, typical, some typical Go code with some constants. Very simple interface. There is a structure with some simple fields and some methods which are more or less idiomatic for, for uh, Go. For example, uh, the failures are communicated by returning the error, um, and also this is typical pattern uh, to return uh, value in case of success and error in case of uh, failure. Uh, now, when you have such a library, you use Go Mobile to, to build uh, the, the target uh, archive. So you specify uh, the target system, which is Android or iOS, uh, you specify the name of the output library and you specify your Go package. And uh, Go Mobile compiles everything into native libraries. It builds GNA stuff, whatever it needs, all this glue code, and it conveniently packs everything into your Android archive, which you can uh, then uh, put inside your application, Android or iOS, in this case Android, of course. Uh, and you can use it as a normal uh, Java library, for example. <coughs> for example. So this is, this is what Go Mobile actually converts your Go code into. Um, as you can see here, this is this logger interface. It was converted in, to, to, to Java syntax. Uh, integers are converted to long and stuff like that. Uh, there are some limitations. Uh, Go Mobile lets you use <coughs> a subset of types. So it lets you use uh, signed floats and signed integers, signed integers uh, booleans, strings. Uh, it lets you use byte slices. Uh, slices are similar to arrays, but they are actually view into an array, something like span uh, in, in .NET, for example, or some other technologies. So <coughs> uh, it lets you uh, use all of that. Um, 
it lets you use uh, interfaces uh, and functions which uh, which uh, uh, use these supported types, and it also lets you uh, uh, use structures uh, and, and methods on them which use these uh, supported types. Uh, so for example, <coughs> as you can see here, um, the, it converted Go function which return, returns an error into a uh, Java method which, uh, which returns nothing, which is void, but throws an exception. So this is even more important for, for this form of, of Go functions because Java, of course, cannot return multiple values. So uh, instead, it returns long in case of success and it throws an exception in case of, uh, in case of error. Uh, thus, you get very idiomatic code <laughs> for Java on Java side while you write idiomatic Go code on the, on the Go side. <coughs> uh, of course, Go as a, as a platform just gives you some functionality, but you cannot implement everything in it. For example, there is no cross-platform uh, Bluetooth support across the, uh, all, the, all the target systems. Uh, <coughs> of, uh, additionally, if you have to implement some callbacks from your uh, Go library mm, on your application side, you need to do it on, on the platform, platform side. Uh, this is very easy to do uh, just by defining uh, your interfaces on Go side, exposing them to Java side, uh, implementing them in Java and registering them, <coughs> sorry, registering uh, them back uh, with the Go. For example, how, uh, this is how we implemented a support for Bluetooth connections because, as I said, there is no cross-platform cross Bluetooth support in, in Go. We have a very simple interface with methods like close, open, close, read, and write. Uh, we implemented on uh, Java side uh, by wrapping a Bluetooth socket. And we just register it back uh, with Go and call these methods, and this works flawlessly. Uh, same thing for logging or application callbacks. We have interfaces that we just implement them on Java side. Now, every time when you are calling <coughs> from one platform into another, there is inevitably some, some overhead uh, involved. Uh, it was interested, interesting for us to see how, how big this overhead is, and we ran some benchmarks. And we were in for some quite nasty surprise. <clears throat> As you can see here, uh, this is a benchmark which measures calling uh, do nothing functions, uh, calling them from Go and implementing, and, uh, implementing them in Go. And we are running on some Android device. Uh, there is approximately 17,000 calls per millisecond. Then we implemented same do nothing functions in Android, and, and we were calling them across this platform boundary, and this is what we got. It's a huge difference, obviously. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, the examples are, there is a function uh, which takes no arguments, one function which takes int argument and integer, and one which takes string argument. So uh, when you uh, take this into consideration, uh, there is more than, Calling, calling do nothing functions across this boundary is more than 50 times slower. And for st the string version, it's even more because you also have to copy and allocate memory for string. So this looked rather horrible, but there are reasons uh, uh, why this is so. Um, first of all, uh, layout, uh, calling conventions for Go are quite different from most calling conventions for 64-bit 64 uh, <coughs> 64 uh, architectures. Um, so the platform has to convert uh, calling convention from a, a Go, a Go version into registers which are used, for example, on x86 and stuff like that, uh, 64. Um, additionally, there is a huge problem with how stack works in, in Go and in some native, native, uh, native platform. Um, Go routines are executed with, with started with very small stack I think it's like four kilobytes or something, and then they're growing as required uh, during the execution of your Go routine. Uh, native stack is not like that. It gets either one megabyte or eight megabytes of, 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 of memory depending on your platform, and uh, this means that for every call, this stack has to be aligned, it has to be made up for, for these differences. Um, additionally to that, uh, there is also, uh, since Go routines are cooperative, they cannot just yield uh, uh, to the, to back to the system. 
uh, when you are entering the system call, and which can block for a long time, uh, Go Runtime has to tell the other components uh, to run other Go routines on a separate, separate thread. Uh, all of the, this creates a lot of baggage, and this explains why uh, there is this huge difference between, uh, between performance on with native and across the platform. Uh, however, what is important is that this still means that one call uh, takes three, uh, takes one microse microsecond or a couple of microseconds, four microseconds uh, in, in this worst case, uh, depending on scenario. Uh, our transactions typically call between 50 calls into uh, Android platform. And in worst case, if, we, if you bump logging to the highest level, then you have like 500, 500 calls. This means that we were introducing up to 500 calls uh, with four microseconds, which is some two milliseconds in worst case scenario. Um, in, in best case scenario, it's like half a millisecond or even less. Uh, and typically your transaction takes between 10 and 20, uh, 20 seconds. So this overhead was actually negligible. It, it, it really didn't affect uh, uh, the performance of the, of the whole system. Additionally, here is an another benchmark when we replaced uh, do nothing functions with functions which just sleep for one millisecond. So they do nothing, they just block for one millisecond. Millisecond, and in this case, it dropped uh, dropped from 52 or 60 times to some 25 percent uh, uh, overhead for, for typical call, and this is actually more uh, much closer to, to realistic scenarios and realistic methods that sh that uh, we we call. So there was not actually much problem with with performance, although the initial benchmarks were quite horrible. So <clears throat> there is also some overhead in size. Uh, when you compile your library with Go Mobile, it will, uh, by default, compile for all the target platform, target architectures, which means uh, 32 and 64 uh, ARM architectures, and same for for the Intel. Uh, you can specify this when you build your library. You can select just some one, two, or more uh, architectures, and it will build exactly what you want. Uh, so this is the size of the native libraries. However, since it is compre compressed, the whole SDK, which is uh, added to our Java project, is actually only 15 only. Okay, it's not only, but it's 15 megabytes for all the supported platforms, which is today not that much because you have mobile applications much larger than, than that. So neither the performance, neither the size actually uh, 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 proved to be the problems with, with the implementation. There were, of course, some issues. I have just listed the, the good parts, mostly, but there were other issues during the implementation. So one of, the, of those is Go package management. It's, it was quite horrible. It's now a bit better because they support modules. It's still not really good, but it's much better than before. However, Go Mobile doesn't support modules. So we had to use rendering or some other, other techniques to, to take care of, of our dependencies and in order to, to, to create repro reproducible builds. Um, this was not really that, that nice. You have to take care of object cycles. So you cannot have a Go object holding reference to Java object and then same object uh, having reference back to your Go object. The, this will create a cycle which cannot be garbage collected. Fortunately, this is not actually scenario which comes up that frequently. We never had it, so we never had issues with it. With it. Uh, another thing is panic handling. As those of you who use Go might know, uh, um, Go doesn't use exceptions, but uh, it returns error as a value from the function. However, it has a panic which, in my opinion, is actually the exception which just crashes your system. So. Um, you need to take care of that. You need to handle uh, panics explicitly if you don't want your Go site to, to crash your whole application. Um, the other thing which was less nice is that Go Mobile uh, takes care of Android and iOS. If you're building for other platforms, you don't have that support. You have to really write uh, uh, your glue code manually. This means that you need uh, <coughs> to map uh, your Go code into C calls and, and this is the place where you 
have to be very careful with your memory allocation uh, because uh, it's very easy to make a mistake uh, where you allocate some uh, string, you send it to the go side, and you cache it into some variable, uh, your C or, uh, native code deletes uh, this memory, it frees up the memory, and you are left with actually go string which is using the allocated memory, and this will crash your application. And additionally, there is no support for .NET, which was one of our target platforms, so we had to also write this platform invoke uh, signatures for calling into our C libraries, which are calling into Go. <clears throat> this was some manual work. It wasn't that, that nice, but it's, it's not actually that, that hard. Um, few words about, about Lua. Uh, as I said before, I, I was personally disappointed with Go as a language, uh, because I, I expected more. This was my first, uh, real uh, real uh, real uh, product uh, writ written in go uh, however lua uh, showed up showed up to be a, a, an excellent little dynamic language for scripting <clears throat> it's very concise it's very fast it, it's easy to write it it's easy to analyze it um, there are tools which let you uh, integrate lua into your go code uh, in a very simple almost trivial way um, it integrates with go types extremely well you just provide interface and you just call methods on the Go interface from, from your Lua code. This works very well. It compiles to bytecode very quickly. We have some, I don't know, 3,000 lines of Lua scripting, and initially we compile them to bytecode for each transaction. So we wanted to optimize that, to just do it once. However, it takes between 10 and 20 milliseconds to, to compile everything to bytecode. It makes no sense to optimize this, because this happens in parallel with uh, making a connection to your terminal, uh, payment terminal, and this always takes longer, so by the time that you connect to your device, this is already compiled to your bytecode, and there is no reason to optimize. We probably will someday, but honestly, there's no reason for that. And another nice thing is, like, with every scripting, there is always a risk that script might be changed to do something that you originally didn't want to do. Um, Lua interpreter can be run in safe mode, where you don't load uh, libraries for networking and stuff like that. So even if you change uh, your script to do some network calls into some suspicious server, uh, this will crash because uh, the, the, the script host is actually not using uh, uh, any networking library, so there are no calls which can really be done uh, to access the, the other server. So this is a very nice feature for, for every scripting environment because there is always risk about change, change script. So Lua turned out to be a really good choice for this kind of uh, work. <clears throat> uh, what worked well? Well, in the end, Go, Go really did work well, because besides the, the problems with the language itself, uh, uh, the tooling more than made up for this, and the ecosystem is nice. We found already existing open source packages for most of the things we needed. We didn't have to write some elementary things from, from the scratch. Uh, this helped us remove duplication, so all this logic of bridging these components and calling callbacks, this is implemented in the same way in one place. Um, due to scripting, uh, we managed to, to separate transaction logic, which is similar, very close to business logic, from, from technical details like communication with uh, payment terminal and, and with gateway. Uh, this allowed us to, to actually finally test this business, business logic just, just by providing uh, mocked uh, device interfaces, mocked gateway interface, and stuff like that. Uh, we didn't have that before because it was all locked together in one implementation. Uh, Lua scripting is actually very, very productive. You can implement a lot of things with a little, with, with not that much code and it, it, you can change it very quickly, you can replace it very quickly, download it to, from the server. Uh, this turned out also to be a nice thing, and since we are now building Go directly, instead of having all these Rails uh, uh, Ruby stuff, it was much easier to debug issues with the payment. You just start it as a normal process, and you compile it, and that's it. You can run through the debugger and see what happens. So these were the good, uh, good things. Uh, there are some things you have to watch out, as shown with this performance uh, uh, benchmarks, 
you have to avoid chat interfaces. You don't want to call, call one million functions over this platform boundary because it will be slower. If you have to, then you have to move all these hot code paths to the platform side and run a loop there instead of calling, calling it a million times. You have to take care of that if you have such a problem. Um, additionally, when you're writing such a library, you have to provide some API for the applications which are integrating with it. And here you really need to have feedback uh, from your developers. Uh, it's, it's very easy to end up with an API, which you then deliver to them, and then they tell you, well, this is not actually how we need it or how it works, it has to be different. So it has to be, uh, there has to be some feedback from platform developers back to your, to your library, and it helps if you can plan releases of the core library as a product. So you ship one version with defined uh, API, and then the platform uh, integrates it uh, according to this specification while you continue to develop the new version. Uh, doing it in parallel typically creates conflict with APIs and stuff like that. So these are actually the things that we couldn't uh, predict in advance, but turned out to be something you have to watch out for. And actually, I think time's up, right? So this is it. Uh, before questions, just one thing. If you are interested in topics like that, uh, we are hiring, so you, you can come discuss with me if you want something like, about these topics so we can talk. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you, Zdeslav. Feel free to ask. We do have time for one quick question before lunch. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I was with you right until the point that you said you were disappointed with the language. Yeah. Man, them's fighting words. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, did you have a problem with the uh, uh, releasing on the iOS? Because uh, as far as I know, GoMobile has a problem with compiling to bitcode, which, which is a requirement for some platforms on the iOS. Uh, uh, actually, uh, iOS is the only platform which we still haven't uh, applied this. We switched uh, Windows side and we switched the Android. For iOS, we didn't have time to, to try it. We just built the native libraries, and honestly, I cannot tell whether it works for iOS. This is why there is not much information uh, information about iOS. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Have a have a good meal, and we'll yeah. see you after lunch. Thanks. Thank you, Zaslav.